know there's been a lot of uh, talk, concern about COBOL, and they're going to uh, talk about their ideas on what would constitute a comprehensive <coughs> study on COBOL. And a portion of that study will be funded, probably a lot of the study will be funded by the monies that we have set aside from the Standard Bread Development Fund and also from the Thoroughbred Advisory Fund uh, to fund that research. Really um, think about how we plan a series of studies that will comprehensively or thoroughly evaluate cobalt uh, in racehorses and sort of I refer to this group that's been working as uh, Team Cobalt because we sort of need a name for that. So. Um, and to gather information, and there's a fair bit of uh, information out there that's not published. There's very little that's published, and we're trying to make sure that we uh, fully understand what's been done already. We don't want to duplicate research unnecessarily. Uh, we also want to know what's not published, but maybe would provide some insights into how we best design these studies. <coughs> the goal is to certainly use all that information to develop a series of well-designed studies so that when you actually get the results, they mean something. Um, to answer key questions, and that's really regarding safety as well as uh, the effects uh, of cobalt, whether they're physiologic, pathophysiologic, or perhaps performance enhancing. Uh, should be emphasized, it takes time to design those studies, uh, and it takes um, uh, resources. And as the chairman said, we will be using uh, at least a portion of those monies allocated from uh, the, uh, the, commi uh, the commission to Ohio State for equine research. Uh, I would say also that although the planning discussions are ongoing uh, and yet to be finalized or fully designed, we anticipate that uh, the course of these will occur um, uh, to address a broad, uh, some broad categories, and yet I, I can't give specifics because they're, they're not yet fully defined. One category is uh, really, I would say, the pharmacologic, including pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic data, and basically in lay terms that means uh, really how the, the pharmacokinetic is really how the uh, body affects the distribution and elimination of a drug or a medication and, and pharmacodynamics is really how the body responds to that uh, and has different effects on that. And we've, we've talked about sort of the levels that we want to achieve uh, in, in subsequent studies and right now that's based on some of the data that's out recently uh, from the ARCI of the 25, 50, and maybe greater than 300 parts per billion. Again, not set in stone, but things that we're contemplating. The second thing is really the physiologic or pathophysiologic effects. Uh, we know from research in other species, in, including at laboratory animals, um, some in horses and some in, in uh, people, that they could, that can include the, the heart, lungs, um, muscular system, uh, hematologic or the, the blood cells, uh, and some other parameters. And, there's been no evidence in the horse, at least yet, that uh, would, it, would suggest that there's been any performance enhancing effects of cobalt, but also in people, um, you know, you have to see chronic levels that are above 300 uh, or in, in other species, and so there, there may be ways to look at that, because some of the studies that have been thus, done thus far, far uh, have not, when you administer cobalt, they have not seen an increase in erythropoietin, which is... Uh, or what really stimulates red blood cell synthesis. However, it, it may be that the doses haven't been high enough that have been administered. But there are there's some other potential biomarkers uh, that, we're, that we may look at that could actually give us an indication if, if there's a potential for a performance enhancing effect. And I want to make sure that everybody understands that those initial studies would not be looking at performance because that's a whole other series of things. But look at indicators of of biomarkers or things that are in the blood or tissue that might suggest the potential for performance enhancing. And then the final thing is really evaluating what we've heard, uh, again this is anecdotally to some extent, but certainly there's a lot of oral supplementation uh, of, of things, some of which are legitimate, uh, that contain cobalt. There's also uh, certainly evidence or suggestion of intravenous administration pre or post race. Sometimes those things well, they would be additive, and so one of the things that in the last meeting we had people felt would be important to look not just at the two individually, but sort of the additive effects of IV on top of chronic oral administration of cobalt. And then 
I should mention uh, that, that although currently not planned, probably ultimately the best way to, to uh, determine is there a performance enhancing effect would be to take the information gathered from that, those previous studies uh, and actually look at it in a population of training uh, horses, horses in training. That's not an easy thing to do because of all the confounding factors that might be there, uh, including genetics and other things that, that might be challenging it, and it would probably take a very large population of horses to potentially see an effect and would be um, quite costly. That doesn't mean it's prohibitive, it just means it's, it's certainly not nothing that is planned in the immediate future, but maybe after those other studies. We know that it's being abused. Well, we know it's being used, that horses are receiving cobalt with the hope that it's performance enhancing. And uh, I mean, there's enough anecdotal evidence to suggest that it is performance enhancing. Nobody's ever proven it, but they're doing it for a reason. Speculation that could be that the group of horses, standard bred horses that are prone to tying up or cramping during racing, uh, that cobalt actually might be preventing that, uh, even at the levels that are given, not these, not super physiologic or high doses. And again, that's not known. That's but that's one possible uh, way that they could actually be used therapeutically, uh, provided they're not having toxic or, or true performance enhancing effects. There is not a comprehensive study on the things that we've talked about here on cobalt in, the, in this country? There's been a number of studies on cobalt, but uh, I don't think there's ever been a gathering of uh, minds like this to look into uh, some of the basic s studies that need to be done, like the pharmacokinetics, uh, and then uh, uh, some of the potential toxicities, that sort of thing. Nobody's ever looked at a series of experiments one building on the other. We want to answer the key questions, and so if we don't, if we know more about what's really happening, that we could actually probably uh, design the studies to best answer the questions. And so I would invite any of them who have any direct or indirect knowledge about that uh, to certainly be willing to contribute that, because that could help us design a, a better study. I realize it's early, but is it even possible to take a guess at what the, what, what this study might cost? Just, just a question. I, I think it would be We're progressive here. Uh, premature <laughs> to try to answer that. Um, I've asked that question. Um, I mean, I think each of these proposed studies, you know, we part of developing the study would be to develop a, bu a budget to go along with it. Organizations, if they want to participate in this comprehensive study, other racing commissions, other maybe the RMTC or the RCI or, or, or whomever, that invitation will be will be extended. It's not just going to be the Ohio State Racing Commission. We would like to have involvement from not only financially but intellectually um, from a number of folks as we move forward.